Have you ever wanted to add in a sign in with GitHub button to your page? Well, I did. And in this video, I'm going to show you everything I learned about how to log into GitHub, how to add it to your website. When adding this button, we're also going to look at the intricacies of how OpenID Connect works, how OAuth 2 works, and how we can use this with a robust backend system using AWS Cognito, Lambdas, and user pools. So I really deep dive in this video. So I hope you guys learned a lot. I really wanted to learn like the underlying mechanism of how OAuth 2 works, how we can use that in an AWS infrastructure backend, but also how you can connect it to your front end website and make it all work. We're also gonna use AWS Amplify Gen 2, which allows us to create our backend infrastructure as code, which is gonna make it really easy and straightforward to like make updates and changes. We can also add a sandbox for multiple users. So we'll deep dive into that as well. Leave a comment below if you like these in-depth videos like this. Let's jump into it. Let's look at OAuth 2.0. So if you look at the authorization OAuth apps guide that GitHub provides, it basically says that you need to use GitHub apps with OAuth 2.0 to be able to do the login that you need. And if you're not familiar with OAuth 2.0, it's basically an industry standard protocol for authorization. So don't get this confused with authentication. Authorization is essentially a way that you can prove your credentials to another provider, to another place. In this case, we want to be able to log in with, with GitHub and then use those credentials to get the GitHub information that we need. And then we can also use this information so we can protect endpoints. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let me show you a kind, of, kind of a quick rundown of how OAuth 2 works and how we're gonna be using it in this application today. So I have Excaladraw here, I have OAuth 2.0. On the left-hand side, I have my client, which we'll just assume is the user. And this is the website. And when I say the website, this also can include any uh, server routes, if you're using like Nuxt or Next or Lambda functions, things like that. And then on the server side, this is more of GitHub, like to connecting to GitHub. It says here in the guides for GitHub that we need to request a user's GitHub identity using this OAuth authorize. We're gonna put an arrow over here, and then essentially we're going to a, do a git to this, this right here. And we're also gonna send some other things over. So it says here, you can send over client ID, required redirect URI login. So in this get request, at the minimum, we probably wanna send over the client ID and the scope. So these two things we're gonna send over in this request. And that is the first part. And what happens on the server side, it'll actually, in the GitHub side, it'll pop up. If you haven't logged in before, it'll bring you into a login page. If you haven't logged in, it'll ask you, do you authorize this website to use, to, to grab this information? And it'll tell you what information that, that it'll have. And scope, you can think of scope as like what sort of information you're looking for. After you authorize with the GitHub server and log in, and it's going to return uh, essentially a code. And this code will have a bunch of numbers, numerals. It won't mean anything to us, but this code will be important because this is what our server is, our, our client is going to use to be able to get something called an access token. You actually, once you get that code back, you have to make another call to this post. So let's add another line here. The client is then going to reach back out to GitHub. And then we're also going to send over the code. So this will have the code being sent over to this access token endpoint. Then this is going to return back, uh, this is gonna return back the access token. And this is usually a JWT token. And this is gonna give us access and allow us to make calls, authenticated calls to GitHub. The website's gonna call back the GitHub, but maybe a different URL. It'll send over usually that access token in the, in the authorization header. So then this user, We'll then return back any information you want, like the user information, uh, including like your email, uh, real name, your first name, last name, things like that. So that's essentially how, how OAuth works. You're able to grit the access token and now you can talk to GitHub as if you're a logged in user. So this client, this website will have access to whatever you granted access to during this part where you uh, authorize at the beginning. So this works great for just authorization, but we wanna have this connected to our website. We wanna save user information. We wanna be able to connect to protected routes. So let's take a look at the AWS side of, of things. So here is 
our graph of ADA, our AWS account and what we're going to create today to be able to talk to this GitHub backend. We're going to add in an API gateway. An API gateway is a way to protect our REST endpoints. We can set up great limiting. We can set up connections to other internal parts of AWS, other Lambda functions or other services. So right now we're going to just use it as kind of a gateway to all our Lambda functions that we're going to set up. So we're going to have an API gateway. Then we're going to have three different Lambda functions, a user, and this is going to be talking to the gateway. We also have a private, and then we're going to set up a token. And I'll explain why we need all three of these. The way this works is the user will be, it will be a Lambda to grab a GitHub user information. So in this last part right here, where we grab the user information, email, last name, this is going to be a Lambda function that's going to make a call to this. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that when we at this part right here in the function, in, in this flow, when we retrieve the access token, usually, usually you do a post request here, but you do it on a server, like a Lambda function. You don't wanna send this from the client because you also have to send in the client secret in this post call. So we'll definitely need a endpoint to hit or rest endpoint to, to do this functionality. Uh, the, the private will be an example of how we can protect a route or a endpoint that can only be auth uh, used by authorized and authenticated users. And then we're going to create a token, which is going to grab us that access token right here. So we'll need to have something that grabs this access token, just like we had one that grabs this user information. Cognito will be our identity provider and our identity provider does a few things. I'll explain in a moment what those do, but it's a way to track uh, who the users are in our system. Uh, the attributes attached to them have this API gateway. It'll be talking back and forth because we're going to create something called a gateway authorizer. And what this is, is the API gateway when it wants to talk to like, let's say this private Lambda, it's going to, it's going to be connected to a, an authorizer that says, oh, this user has to be authorized to be able to talk to this private one. While these other, these other ones you can access, uh, if you're a public user. To give a little bit more clarity too, we'll have here on this side here, let me move this over. We'll have a client. So this will be like your web browser and this web browser will be talking directly to Cognito. It'll be talking back over. Uh, it'll also be talking to the API gateway. We'll be talking back over. So like for every time you log in, you're gonna have this login will be talking directly to Cognito. It'll be grabbing some tokens that it'll use to authenticate when it goes to the API gateway. And so this will be our REST API. So every time we talk to the API gateway, we're gonna talk to these Lambda functions in the background here. Uh, one other thing to realize too is after you log in, there's gonna, it's gonna give us an access token, identity token, and a refresh token. One really nice thing is on the client side, we're going to use our AWS Amplify or AWS Amplify JS library, which is going to handle all that hard, heavy lifting of taking the JWT and access tokens and refreshing them. Because what happens is this access token and identity token will expire after a certain period of time. And then you have to use their fresh token to get new ones. And that kind of logic is all built into the JavaScript library that we're going to use. And we use these tokens to be able to talk to the API gateway and talk to protected routes like our private route that we're going to have. So let's take a look, look a little bit more inside Cognito. Okay, so Cognito will be our identity provider. So this is the service that AWS offers to handle our authentication and authorization. And we really want to make sure that when we connect to this OAuth 2.0 to GitHub, that we save these credentials and then we can use them inside our app and we can use that access token and everything works correctly. So there's a couple of pieces of this. One is that inside Cognito, you can add in user pools and user pools have a few specific purposes. Uh, one is to hold in users. As you expect, a user pool holds your information. So anytime anybody signs in or creates a new account, it's held inside the user pool. You can see uh, anything about that user that you, you can ask for certain attributes when they log in. That's another thing is attributes. So when they log in, 
uh, when you sign up for the first time, you can ask them certain things. You can save that information into the user. You can save other things too. Uh, it also has like the password policy for that user. So it has, maybe you require uh, a certain amount of lowercase letters or uppercase letters, but all those settings and everything is, is configured inside the user pool. And you can have multiple user pools if you so choose. And then another big part of the user pool is the user pool client. So the user pool client is a, a way you can access the user pool. So you can have multiple clients in one user pool and you can have different settings for each of those, those clients. And so some of the settings you can set in the user pool client is like your auth flows. So you can have SRP or you can have OAuth or you can have, you can use something called the Cognito uh, hosted UI, which is a different type of flow. And then you can also set uh, your refresh settings. And so for example, you can have the access token expire after, after 10 days or five days or 30 days or whatever you want. So it has a lot of different settings there. And then you also can set up the hosted UI. And hosted UI is a way that once you log in, it's sort of it's almost like if you use login through GitHub, like we've been talking about, or Facebook, uh, it'll redirect you to a website. But this is your own like external login page hosted by Cognito, and then you can log in, and then it redirects you back, and it uses OAuth uh, behind the scenes to do that. To be able to set up this OAuth 2.0 with, with GitHub, there, there's a couple of different ways. One is you use something called OIDC or Open ID Connect. And unfortunately, uh, OAuth, at least this way through uh, the way they, they recommend through authorizing OAuth apps, it doesn't support Open ID Connect. And the, what Open ID Connect is, is Usually OAuth 2.0 is just meant for authorization, but when you use add in OpenID Connect, you also get some of that authentication as well. And usually the biggest difference is, is when this point right here, when you do this post call and you send over the code, it sends back the access code. It actually also sends back an identity token as well. And that helps you make sure that this user is from this, from this server. So it's like another layer uh, and level of security. Unfortunately, since GitHub does not support it and they that's not the way that they recommend, you can set up your own open ID provider inside Cognito and kind of create all the endpoints that you need. And I'll show you how that works. So let's, let's say here, we're gonna create this. We'll make it, we'll zoom in a little bit. We'll have this be our GitHub OIDC identity provider. And OIDC is the Open ID Connect. And inside here, we'll be talking directly to the user pool client. So this will come over here and this will go right over here. And so you can connect a GitHub OIDC identity provider directly into your user pool client. And once that happens, you can log into uh, you can log in via GitHub and then it'll store that user, that information for that user. And you get to select what user information you want to store as attributes inside the user pool. And then you can use this uh, back up here. Once that's connected, we can use it as an authorizer and they'll only certain users will be able to check or connect to this private Lambda function. Let's, let's take a look a little bit closer at this OIDC provider that we're going to create. So the OIDC provider has a few things that it does, it asks for. One is the client ID. If we go all the way back to OAuth 2.0, part right here, we have this client ID, and then later on, we actually send over the client secret with this code. Those are both, we actually have to register an app with GitHub, and they'll give us that client ID and client secret. So that's exactly what we'll need to set up the GitHub OIDC provider. So we'll have the client ID. We'll also give it the client secret from GitHub. And then we're going to obviously provide it the user pool that we just created. And then one big part of it is it's going to have these endpoints. And these endpoints are gonna ask us some information. So it's gonna ask us for the authorization URL. It's gonna ask us for the token URL, the user info URL, and the JWKS URI, which stands for the OIDC IDP JSON web key set. So you need to find these four URLs. 
And since we know that GitHub doesn't support uh, the OpenID Connect through the OAuth apps that it recommends, there is a way to do OpenID Connect if you're using GitHub Actions, but that's completely different. So we're not going to get those too confused. That we actually have to do all this ourselves because OAuth 2.0 doesn't send over identity token. It doesn't have these correct endpoints for us to use. It has some though. So for auth the authorization endpoint, we know that we can use this one right here, this GitHub login OAuth authorized. That's the same one. So we have that one. Now for the token one, we'll need to create a Lambda and then that Lambda will need to essentially access this access token and grab that information and send it back. So we need to create our own Lambda function to do that part. And then same thing for user info. We need to create a user Lambda and that user Lambda is going to talk to this API GitHub dot com slash users. It's going to send back an object in a way so that we can map it to the attributes in our user pool. So we'll need to create that. And the JWKS URI actually can be the same URL as the token. So that'll be the same using the same Lambda function. So once we set up the API gateway and we have all these Lambda setups, we'll have these URLs available and then we'll plug them all into this GitHub OIDC provider. So that's kind of a high level overview of what we're going to do today. So let's jump into the code and look at how we're going to do this. We'll need to set up our GitHub OAuth app so that way we can use it inside our application. We'll need that client ID and client secret. So to do that, I logged into GitHub into the developer settings. You can go to settings slash developers or you can go into your profile here, click settings and then go down to developer settings and you'll see this page. Now I have a few older apps in here, but let's create a new one and we'll click new OAuth app. And I'm gonna call this the AWS GitHub login. And then it's gonna ask me for a homepage URL. Now we're gonna create this later on using the Cognito host. So uh, I know for a fact that I'm gonna give it this domain name. I'm gonna give it this domain prefix name, this test-eric-domain-github. So uh, for the homepage URL, I just need to put that login URL that I'll, I'll be creating in a moment. And then for the authorization callback URL, I'll put the same URL in that test-eric-domain-github and then instead I'll do OAuth2 slash ID response. So I'll go ahead and click register app here and then this will go ahead and register it. So after it's registered, it's gonna give us a client ID and a client secret. Uh, you can click generate new client secret and it'll give you one. I went ahead and did that off camera, but I went and copied that client ID and client secret cause I'll need to use that later. I can also always go back in here later and change these URLs if I need. To begin, we are going to be using a next application in the front end, and then we're gonna use AWS in the back end. Now, if you're following along and you're using Nuxt or Astro or any other front end framework, don't worry, this is going to be very agnostic. You can use any framework you want to do what I'm using today. Just, uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm using Next. Now, to get started, I'm gonna assume you already have an AWS account. If you don't, you can get one for free. I'll put a link in the description. And then we're going to use the new Amplify new code first DX Gen 2 to get started. Uh, I also did a full stack tutorial on this uh, earlier. I'll put a link in the description too if you guys want a little bit more information. So we're going to go a little bit quicker, but let's assume that you're brand new. You can click the get started at docs.amplify.adbus slash gen 2. We now have a, a new Next.js app router section, which I'm happy about. I went ahead and created the next app beforehand, so we can skip that part. Uh, essentially what we need to do is we need to run this command. So uh, here is my folder and inside my next app, I'm just gonna copy and paste this in. This npm create amplify at latest. And I'm gonna okay to proceed. And this is gonna create the scaffolding for the new amplify backend that we wanna add in for our AWS backend. Okay, great, it's done. Now, if we follow the get starting guide, it's gonna tell you to run npm run dev, and then you can run this npx amplify sandbox command, and that's going to create a sandbox environment for us. And then we can make some updates and changes. And by the way, if at this point you don't have a, an account, you can configure your AWS account to use amplify. 
So there's this NPX Amplify Configure profile, and this will allow it so you can connect to AWS on the command line. I already did that already, so I'll skip that part, but if you are following along this tutorial and you don't have an AWS account and you're setting up your command line for the first time, you'll need to configure to turn this command. Actually skip the rest of this getting started tutorial to get up and running here without it. And it's because uh, our app is gonna be a little bit different. So now I have this new Amplify folder and you can kind of take a look at what's in it. We have this resource which has, uh, this will create a Cognito backend and user pool for us. We can set social providers, external providers. We can set user attributes. So let's start here to get our backend up and running with the GitHub login. For first, uh, I'm just going to delete a few things here. And so email true, yep, that's good. Now in external providers, we want to set up uh, our callback URLs. So this is the addresses that we're going to need uh, once we connect to our GitHub login, uh, our federated GitHub login, it's going to redirect back to us and we want to redirect to this site. Since we're using this locally, I'm just gonna use localhost. If this was in production, we would put in the correct URL domain name. And then we're gonna have something called logout URLs. And here is where I'll put basically the same one, this localhost 3000. And now for user attributes, uh, we can also add in other things like multi-factor authentication. Uh, we don't really need to do that. So for user attributes, I'm gonna add a few in. First, we want email. And required, we're going to have true and mutable true. No, typically with emails, they don't change, but since we're using GitHub and the email coming from GitHub could change, I'll make it mutable. Uh, and then we'll use preferred username. And we'll, we'll actually, from here, we'll, uh, this is required false. And then uh, mutable true as well. And then the last attribute that I want to have is the profile picture. So we'll do required false here, mutable, true. And so these are attributes that we're going to retrieve from the, from the basically the GitHub user authenticated endpoint. And then in the backend file, this is how everything is going to be put together. So this is where it's going to generate the auth or Cognito user pool that we just created. And it's also gonna create the app sync data. Like I said, I'm not gonna change this. We could delete it if we want. I'm gonna leave it as is. Now, one thing we need to do is we need to create a hosted UI. So I'm gonna create uh, this backend here, uh, this variable called backend. And what's really nice, this is all typed. So underneath this Amplify folder and everything we're doing here, it's basically powered by CDK which is the cloud development kit for AWS, which allows us to create infrastructure as code. And so we can get access to these resources and add additional stacks if we want. We have a create stack here and we can create our whole backend. So right now, as of this recording, we only have auth and data as kind of this kind of higher level, level construct. But in the future, we're gonna add in more things like uh, storage, Lambda functions, things like that. So it'll be a very straightforward way to add those resources in. But for now, we can we can drop back drop back down to our L, what they call level two or level three constructs using CDK to add more infrastructure, and that's what we're going to do. So first, we want to make sure that we add in a domain name. So in that previous step, when I created the when I created the new app for GitHub, I had to put in the domain names for for the uh, auth, and I'll need to create that now. So I'm going to, I think I'll call this Cognito Domain. And then inside here, you can see here we need to put the Cognito Domain, and then the domain prefix. Now, if we look back at what we put in before, we had this uh, test Eric, I believe was the domain. So let me grab that. So I'll just put in right here, test Eric domain dash GitHub. 
And so this will create the domain name that we need for this. But we need a few other things to get this up and running. Uh, we need a GitHub provider. Uh, we need the API gateway. We need some Lambda functions. The way I like to do this is uh, I'm gonna create a, a few folders and we're gonna create a new stack. And this new stack is going to do everything from creating the GitHub provider OIDC to the API gateway and the Lambda functions. I'm gonna create a brand new folder here. So I'm gonna call it custom. And then, yeah, we'll do custom first. And then inside custom, we're going to have a few things. Uh, first, I'm gonna create a new file called GitHub provider.ts. And then we'll probably wanna also create a new folder here called API. And this is where we're gonna have our Lambda functions. Inside the uh, Lambda functions, we can create those first. I think that would be easier. And then we can connect it up to our new GitHub provider. So we're gonna have three files here. We're gonna have a private.ts. That's gonna be our private Lambda. We're gonna have our token Lambda. And then our third will be our user Lambda. So let's start with the private one. One thing I, we need to do first is we need to get types. So every time I deal with Lambdas, I wanna have the right types. So I'll install that real quickly. Let's do npm i at types slash AWS Lambda, and we can put tac D, so that's a development dependency. All right, so let's see if we can import this in. I'm gonna copy and paste this from my other screen. This one here, this API gateway proxy with Cognito authorization handler, it just makes it a little easier to create Lambdas. So uh, we can also, by the way, you can notice we're using TypeScript here. It's smart enough to to uh, during the compile step, it'll create this, it'll uh, change it back to JavaScript. It'll com compile it back to JavaScript so we don't have to do that ourselves. All right, so we're gonna have a handler here and that's gonna be that type, that API gateway proxy cognito handler. And it's gonna be async event. And already it's giving us a few errors, but we'll, we'll fix it. We're gonna return and it's gonna return a status code of 200. And it's just, this is really simple. We're just going to return a string uh, that gives some information. So I'm just gonna do a string that says, hello, user. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want in there. And then I'll have some headers, and this is just to make sure that we don't have any issues with cores. So the next part we'll need to do is, let's do the token one next. And this one is also gonna include uh, an NPM package we'll need to install. So it's called Lambda Multipart Parser. And we'll install as a dependency, a development dependency again. I'll go ahead and import both of these in. So now I have my API gateway proxy handler and this new parser. So we'll export const handler. We'll do the API gateway proxy handler, async. E. What's nice about this Lambda multi-part parser is now I can do something like this. I can await parser.parse and then pass in the E to it. And now I have access to uh, the values inside of it. And so I'm gonna create this URL. And this login OAuth access token, if we go back to our documentation, of how to do it. It's essentially, I'm looking at this login OAuth access token right here. So this is going to be the Lambda function that grabs the access token. And we need to pass in a few things to make this work. We're gonna pass in the client ID, the client secret, and most importantly, the code. So we'll need to make sure that this Lambda function re basically sends us this code. Otherwise, you know, this won't work. And remember the client ID and client secret we already have. And then uh, we'll need a, to uh, send back, we'll essentially need to connect to this URL and send information back. So let's do a try catch block. And we'll say if something goes wrong, we'll console log 
error and we'll put this in here and then we'll need to return something. So we'll return status code 500 and then json.stringify error. So we can know what's happening. But in the try block is where we wanted to do the call to this URL and we'll need to do a post. So if we go fetch here, URL, and remember, since we're using node 18, we have access to this fetch. We don't need to import any sort of fetch here. We're gonna do method, method, and this is going to be type post. We're gonna do headers, and we'll accept application JSON. And then once we receive something back from that, we'll await the uh, response.json. And then we'll return the values. So we want to return that. So we'll do status code 200 here. We'll body, we'll JSON stringify the token that it's going to use. All right, so two Lambda functions, two done. Oh, by the way, it's this should be E. E, there we go. So this two uh, functions done here. And now we need to do the last one, which is user. And I'm going to import this in here and we'll export the handler, API gateway proxy handler, async event. And then from here, this is the user information. By this way, this should be handler. And what we want to do is if they should, when you connect to this endpoint, you have to pass in an authorization header. So first we'll make sure that, you know, if someone does that, they actually send it over. And then we'll do a try catch. And I'm going to copy and paste this just for the sake of time, but I'll explain it here. So we're going to do another fetch. And this time we're going to do it to that API GitHub user. So this endpoint will return back all the user information. If we go back to our Scala draw, remember this is the one that will turn back the user information, the email, first name, and last name. So we're gonna do a get request to it. And then we're gonna send that authorization header that was passed in. And we're going to send it into the token. We do token here. We're gonna send the authorization. Uh, basically, you, it, the response is gonna look, the authorization header is gonna look something like this, authorization. Uh, it's going to have a bear and then it's going to have a, a token and it's going to have some information here. So this is, we want to make sure that we grab the bear token out and we pull the information out so that way we can send it to this endpoint. And then as long as everything works, it'll return back an ID. And then we're going to have these, the sub, which is something that we need for uh, cognito to understand everything. This is going to map to the sub and then everything else is going to be in there. And this, this token will essentially have all the email. It'll have the avatar URL. It'll have everything else. So we'll just spread it on, spread it on and it'll be returned. Perfect. Uh, at this point, if I wanted to, I could, uh, test this locally, but for the sake of this video, I'll let you guys do that. And this code will be available in the description below so you can follow along and copy and paste this in as well yourself. All right, so we have now the three different endpoints, but we still need a few uh, other things. First, we need this GitHub provider. Uh, we probably want to make sure that we uh, send it some information. So let's create, let's set this up so that way we, can get this new GitHub provider working. So I'm gonna do const existing stack. I'm gonna use this stack of, I'm gonna import in stack here from AD, AWS CDK Live Core. And I'm gonna do stack of here. And this will be, and probably for the best bet too, is we'll install AWS CDK Live as a dependency. It might give you some warnings, but it should be fine. If you need to, you can do dash dash force if you have to. All right, so we have this stack. So we can do stack of, and we'll pass in backend dot auth dot resources dot user pool. And then we can grab some information that we need. 
So we're going to destructure this, this auth.resources, and we'll need to grab a couple of things, user pool and user pool client. So what this is what this is saying is that we're going to take an existing resource, our user pool. We're going to create a new stack in a moment, but we're also going to grab the user pool and user pool client that, that was created here, and we're going to use that information to create this new GitHub provider and API gateway. Let's go into the GitHub provider and set that up. Uh, I am going to copy and paste a whole bunch of stuff here. And so this is all coming from different parts of the libraries where you have installed. So the AWS CDK lib, this constructs, this backend, we'll be needing to use all this later. So I'm gonna export a type, GitHub provider. And so this is some things that it will be needing to get set up, uh, we'll need in this provider to get it all working. So I'm gonna need the user pool, the user pool client, the client ID, which is a backend secret and a client secret. And this backend secret is of type secret. So we'll see in a second how we can add secrets. Now we're gonna create a class. We're gonna call it GitHub provider. It's gonna extend construct. We're gonna have a few va uh, variables here that we're going to expose. So we're gonna have API, API URL and provider. And then we're going to create a, uh, a constructor. So let's take a look at this constructor. So right here, this is taking in the GitHub provider props, which I misspelled. There it is, capital H. And this should be provider props. And this will essentially create our new stack for us. And so we'll need to pass in all these values and we'll need these to create everything we need to, we need to create. So uh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna comment this out and let's go to the back to the back end and let's see if we can uh, instantiate this new class. So I'm gonna instantiate the new GitHub provider. I'm gonna pass in that existing stack and I'm gonna call it GitHub provider and then I'm going to pass in some values here. So we know we need to pass in client ID, client secret, user pool, and user pool client. So for client ID, we're gonna use secret GitHub client ID. I'll explain what this is in a second. And then for client secret, we're gonna pass in a secret called GitHub client secret. And then for user pool, we'll pass in user pool. And for user pool client, we'll pass in user pool client. So now we have everything we need in this file. So we're gonna create this new GitHub provider, which is gonna create the API gateway, the Lambda, and it's connect all the Lambda functions and put everything together. Now, real quick, we have these two secrets here for GitHub client ID and GitHub client secret. And this is imported from right here. If we go into the official documentation here and we search for secret, there is a whole section on secret environmental variables. When you're running in sandbox mode, you can add in secrets really quickly by adding in this command here. You can run npx amplify sandbox secret set. So let's do that. So we're going to go and I'm just going to copy this npx ampli amplify, sam uh, amplify sandbox secret set. And then the first one we need is this GitHub can see right here, GitHub client ID. So I'm gonna type in GitHub client ID. And now we need to put that value in. So I'm going to, the two values that I set when I was, when we created the GitHub OAuth app, I'm gonna grab the client ID and I'm just going to paste it in here. Great. And now I need to do the secret one. So it's gonna call GitHub underscore client underscore secret. So I'm gonna copy that from my other screen as well. And I'm going to paste it. All right, so those two values are now set, which is what I need. So now we need to go into the GitHub provider. So the first thing I wanna do is, 
I need to set up the uh, backend ID to resolve secrets. And this is in the documentation. Uh, essentially, I'm going to use this syntax here, and I'll copy and paste it. And this will allow us, this backend identifier will allow us to use secrets inside the stack. So we have to pass it in uh, the backend name, the backend namespace, and deployment type. This is all through the CD, CD context key, which will come from platform core. So just remember this. You can follow this along when you're when you are uh, following along this. You, you can look inside the documentation for this. So the next thing we want to do is set up the user lambdas. So there's going to be three of them, and let me just copy and paste them in here. All right, so we have three of them. One called user lambda, which is this one right here, and this this will you we'll call it user lambda. We'll use this URL file to URL path, which if we look at here, we have API user TS. That's the file, and then we'll do runtime Node.js uh, 18, and then we have a token lambda, which will have API token, and then we will have a private lambda, which will be this private one right here. And now it's time to set up the API gateway. And the API gateway has a few settings here. So let's do it. We'll do API GitHub gateway. And we'll do new API gateway. And remember, I already imported this in at the top. Just for the sake, I did import star as API gateway from CDK Live. And from here, We'll do different. Uh, we'll do the REST API, which is this one right here, and then we'll pass in this, and then the API. We'll call it API Gateway. So now we'll need to add in and configure this gateway. So first, we're going to do REST API name. I'm going to call it GitHub API Gateway. Uh, we can add a description if we want. So I'll call this. This is for GitHub API login. And we'll do deploy options. I'll put stage name is prod. And then we'll do default cores options. So this makes it so we don't have any issues with cores. And I'll just copy and paste that in. And then we'll do endpoint configuration. And we'll put in types. And we'll have API gateway dot endpoint type regional, which we'll just make sure that we have uh, for any regional API with the custom domain name. All right, so now we have an API gateway that we have set up. And this should be const. And we'll use this in a second. Oops, I made a quick mistake. I had to move the backend identifier above the constructor and then inside the constructor is where I added the Lambda functions and the API Gateway Hub. So that looks good. OK, so if we continue on, now that we have the API Gateway in there and we have Lambda functions, is media at set up some resources. So uh, I, these resources, I'll go ahead and copy and paste them in here. So this is going to connect our API Gateway to the Lambda functions we just created. So first is the one for user. So I just do API gateway hub dot root add resource for user. I set the Lambda integration to the user Lambda, and then I set it up to Git. So this way it'll do a Git request, will be available. I also do one for token. And I set I pass in the token Lambda, and this will be for post. And now we'll need to create a user pool authorizer. So I'm, let me copy and paste that in here. This is the user pool authorizer. It's uh, use new API gateway CFN authorizer, and it, you pass in the user pool authorizer, API gateway GitHub API REST API ID, the Cognito user pool is the type. I have to pass in the ARN from the props that we passed in here, and then we set it to authorization as the identity source. And so this goes back to our Excalibur where we needed to make sure we set up an authorizer here with the API gateway. So that way, this private one can only be used by users that uh, are authorized. And that's why we have this user pool authorizer. So now we can create this protected route. So in this protected route, 
we, we add the resource to the API gateway like we did earlier. And then we also add the Lambda function that we called private Lambda. We had it allow, you can get it using HP get, but this time we added in this authorizer. So this authorizer we just called, it was created called user pool authorizer. We now add it as the authorizer for it when you do a get request. And then uh, it, the authorization type is Cognito. So that way only authenticated users will be able to get to this resource, this private. And then if they do, they'll see hello user. And now the last part here, and uh, maybe the little bit more complicated is the set up the GitHub identity provider. The purpose of this, uh, like I said earlier, is this GitHub identity provider will be connected to this user pool client that we have already created. And it's going to allow us to use GitHub OAuth to login. We'll basically create all the endpoints and almost act like it's an OIDC provider when it's not really one. So that's why we created all these private and token Lambda functions. So let's take a look at it, what it looks like here. So we have this new user pool identity provider OIDC off of Cognito. It's gonna be called GitHub provider. And now we need to pass in that client ID and client secret. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do props.clientid resolve and then we have to use that backend identifier and then unwrap it. And this is essentially anytime you are using secrets and you're using your own stack, you have to use this syntax. Then we pass in the, the user pool that we got from the props. The issuer URL is just github.com. It's gonna be a git request. And then the four endpoints that I was talking about earlier. So if we go back to our graph, uh, we need to prov we need to have the authorization, token, user info, and JWKS URI. And this will create a GitHub OIDC provider. So for the authorization, it's already there. So this is the login OAuth authorized through GitHub. And we can actually grab the URL from the API gateway we just created and grab the URL and then put it, uh, have it connect to slash token for the JWKS URI, same thing for the token endpoint and same thing for you. And then for the user info, you go to user. So those will be all connected to these Lambda functions. Like this user will obviously bring back the user information. Now here is the attribute mapping. If we remember earlier, we had this email, preferred username and profile picture. Well, when we go to this user endpoint, we need to map what's coming back from that endpoint to the mapping. So for email, we map in, it's called email. And we use this cognito.provider attribute. For name, it's called name, for, and we map that to preferred username. And the avatar URL is the profile picture. And those are the three that will be mapped in. And the last but not least thing we need to do is once we create this, this uh, GitHub identity provider, we need to add it to the client that was created, that user pool client. So to do that, I'm gonna copy and paste it in here. And so here's the user pool client. So we're gonna, we passed in the props that user pool client, we're gonna do dot node default child, which is basically this, essentially what this does is it brings it back down to the L1 construct, which is the lower level CDK construct. And now we can use dot supported identity providers. We can pass in any of the existing providers in there so we don't overwrite that. And then also the new one we just created, this GitHub provider dot provider name. And that's uh, it. We do have three things here at the top that I commented out. So we can bring these back in, but you can see if we, if we uh, highlight over it, it says API has new initializers, definitely it's never assigned anywhere. So this is where we can assign it if we want to. We can bring this back up uh, to whoever instantiates this we could have access to these if we need it. So I'll put these back at the bottom. Okay, so this looks all good to me. And now if we go back to our backend TS, we're initializing this new class. We're passing these client IDs. We set these secrets. So we should be good to go. So to get started here, uh, to actually get this provisioned, we need to run amp npx amplify sandbox. And this will start the provisioning. And this will probably take about five 
six, seven minutes the first time it, it, work, it goes through it. So we'll just wait a moment. While it's provisioning, we can do a few things. So we have this next app. So I'm going to install AWS Amplify in it. Okay, and if you ever get any errors installing AWS Amplify, you can do dash dash force, uh, depending on if there's an issue with one of the dependencies. Okay, so it's installed now and we can run npm run dev. So looks like that stack is still being initialized and that'll open up uh, localhost 3000. If we look at localhost 3000, we're gonna see the basic next out of the box app since I haven't changed anything. And what we're gonna do now is in our pages folder, so we're gonna go to source or app folder, we'll have this page file. And I'm just going to do a little cleanup here and we'll see just a basic hello world right here. And we're not gonna really do too much to the front end. I just wanna see if I can log into an account into GitHub. And luckily there's a, a few ways we can do that. So I'm going to create a new function. I'm gonna call it sign in with Google. We'll make it async. And then we'll wait, sign in, and it's called sign in with redirect. And it, see, it automatically imported in there. And then from there, we could tell it what to sign in. So I'm gonna set a provider. Provider, we need to do custom here, and this will be GitHub. There we go. And then we want to do something that grabs some private information from the, that private endpoint that we created. So we can make sure that works. So I'm gonna do git private info, I'm gonna async. And then from here, I'm gonna grab the tokens. We're gonna do fetch auth session. And by the way, at the top of this, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna use client so we don't have any issues. I'm gonna wait the fetch auth session and then I'm gonna get a response. And I'm just copy and pasting this. And this git will import this in from our API. So we have this API. So we'll have this git, we'll have this API slash, uh, the, this API name is API and we'll set that up in a moment. It's gonna to go to the slash private and then it's gonna send in this authorization ID token that we received back from the back end. For this return here, Let's add some code. Uh, so first, uh, we can we can say hello and log in, and then we want to add in some buttons. So we'll add a button here, and we'll have this sign in with Google or with GitHub, and we'll just on click, and this will go to that new method that we created called sign in with Google sign in with, I just noticed I call it sign in with Google, it should be sign in with GitHub. <laughs> Oops, and this will go to sign in with GitHub. All right, so let's add in a use state here. So I'm gonna have a user info and a set user info. I'm gonna use use state null, make sure that's imported in. And then I want to add in a new function to grab the user information uh, out of our, using our JavaScript library from the backend. So I'm gonna copy, so I'm gonna use git current user info. It's gonna be async function. And then I'm going to grab the session information. I'm gonna use this method called fetch user attributes. And then I can do the set user info. And I'll just add this all in here. So I'm gonna add in a picture, which will be session dot picture. And then I'll add in an email, which will be a session dot email. And then finally we'll do preferred, I think it's called preferred username. And I'll do that session dot preferred username. And it's giving us a warning here that object loader may only specify known properties and picture does not exist in type previous state null. And for this use state here, I can add in some types. So I'll, I'll just add in some types real quickly. 
All right, so now we have our set user user info in here that we want to call. So I'm gonna create another button and this is going to get current user info. And then here I can actually display that information. So let's do something like this. So if, okay, great. So now I have an image here. I have grabbing user info and preferred username. Now there's one more configuration that we need to do. And so we're, we're gonna go and create a new file. We're gonna call it auth.tsx. And this is gonna set up our authentication so we can create everything we need to and connect to our JavaScript library. If you notice now this, if we notice when we go into our terminal here that the sandbox is done running, it has all the values, everything's done. And it created this new file called amplifyconfiguration.json in the root folder of our app. And this is what we're going to use to create, we're gonna use this file with our JavaScript library so everything is connected correctly. So let me go ahead and, and set this up and I'll show you how it works. As I was filling in the auth information, I wanted to check one thing real quickly and that is we'll need to grab the API gateway and also I wanna double check something on Cognito. So if I go here, I'm logged back into my console, I can type in API gateway and inside here I'll click API gateway. And then if I come through here, I can see the new GitHub API gateway that was just created um, earlier and then click stages and then I'm going to go ahead and copy this and this is going to be the prod URL and the second thing I wanted to show you guys is that I realized uh, my console was set to US West 2 and not US East 1 uh, so everything is in US West 2 so that's going to cause a little bit of an issue because earlier when I set up the OAuth, I set it up for US, or US East 1. So I can change that real quickly. So here I'm back in my GitHub login and I just went down here and I changed this from US East 1 to US West 2. So that way it all matched. So I definitely make sure you do that, <laughs> otherwise things won't work. All right, so now I have the invoke URL. So let me show you what I did here. So in this auth.tsx file, I imported React, Amplify, and then config. And then I ran this amplify configure command. Uh, so this is all the information you need. And this sets up auth incognito. I pass in the user pool ID, which is from that configuration file, the amplify configuration JSON file, the client ID, the identity pool. And by the way, this is all typed and this is in the documentation too. So you don't have to memorize this. Uh, allow guest access true. I set up the password format, required lowercase, all this user attributes. And then right here for the domain, uh, I go ahead and put that domain in and difference being now is US West 2 instead of US East 1, because obviously I was in the wrong domain earlier. And then I put the redirect sign in URL, local, local 3000, sign out 3000 response token, uh, response type token. Here's the scopes. And then this endpoint is the Cognito endpoint that I showed you earlier that that's from the API, not Cognito, but it's the API gateway endpoint. And that's right here. So if I did this all correctly, uh, I should work. And then I export it off and I just, essentially you're gonna use this to surround it. It's a client component, uh, surround it in the layout. So I'm gonna add this to the layout. I import auth from auth, and then I'm just surrounding the whole app with this auth right here. And that should do it. So if we come back to our page TSX file, it should show correctly. So let's try it out. All right, so let's see if it works. So I have my page here. I have sign in with GitHub, get current user info. I also added one more button, get private info, which just calls this get private info to see if this endpoint works and then console logs it out. So let's try this. I'm gonna click sign in with GitHub. Um, I'll go ahead and put in my information in. Cool, so now it's asking me if I want to get access to all my different accounts here. I'm just gonna click authorize at the bottom and then this will redirect back to my app. Great, and now if I click get current user info, you see here's me, looks like it grabbed my name, all this information that's now stored in there. And if I go to the console and click get private info, I think I gotta wait it. So I'm gonna wait response body text. I click get private info. Cool, it says hello user. Uh, yeah, it looks like everything's working. So now I've been able to create a private endpoint. 
I can get current uh, my information from from the back end and I was able to sign in. One last thing we could do if we want. So right now this is work, working in our sandbox environment. And so this is an ephemeral environment and when it is stopped, it gets deleted. So if we wanted to have this for a production environment, we would need to push this up to uh, the hosting option. So if you go into the official documentation, you click deploy and host, you can look at the full stack workflows and you can see how you can pull this basically into a production environment. You have to go into the console and set up the GitHub repository inside of it. If you wanna do that, I actually did that in a previous video. I'll link it in the description and I went through the whole process. One thing we'd probably need to do since we're using GitHub as a login, we would need to fix all these URLs that, that I showed you earlier, in especially these uh, redirect sign-in URLs. We probably wanna get our own custom domain name, which would make the most amount of sense. So that way it redirects to the custom domain name. Uh, so if you guys are really interested in that, let me know. I can do that in a future video. But for now, I think this is fine uh, to stop here because this really gives you an idea of how to set this up and add this to your own uh, environment. So let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks, take care, and make sure you leave a comment too.